What's up everyone, this is the guy who doesn't really do reviews, bringing you a review on the Sager NP6165. This will retail anywhere between $1,000 and $750 bucks depending on where you want to get it and what you want to have put in it. Unfortunately, during this review, this model is discontinued and replaced by the NP6365 flavor, which is this pretty much with a slightly thicker body and a 6, GTX 660M in it. But it does not support Optimus, so its battery life kind of sucks. Now get, getting on with this, the top is very very glossy as you can see the smudging along both these sides and there's a ceiling fan, there's my face, and there are my headphones. Um, the top is a wrinkle finish plastic with nice sparkles, so if you look at it if you look at just the right angle, it looks like Edward from Twilight. I'll let that sink in. The Sager in the middle is glossy and shiny and doesn't really smudge too much because it is a very small surface area. Moving on to the front, there's nothing to note except for your indicator LEDs on this side that I'll get into later. Here we have, starting from this side, your SATA 3 6 gigabit per second slash USB 2 USB 3 combo port, which is pretty cool because then you can plug in up to three USB 3 devices, or you could have select an external hard drive, all that good stuff, run it at stupid fast speeds, and do crazy stuff. This is an HDMI port. I do not know if this currently supports HDMI 1.4, but if it does, that's really awesome. I do not know if it'll be updatable to 1.5, whenever that feels like coming out, to support 4K. Um, here is a multi-card reader with a dust cover that clicks in and clicks out. Very fancy, very fun to play with. Two USB 3.0 ports, 6 gig 5 gigabits per second, as you can tell by the blue key tabs. Gigabit Ethernet port, powered by Killer, which is the most ball in part because then you have a lot of network management features like figuring out how much you want to dedicate to torrenting, gaming, web browsing, all those things given based on available bandwidth. You have a VGA port here, lar pr relatively large fender, right? actually it's pretty standard, and then you have your power jack on the side. Flipping it to the back, you have a bare back barring screws and the legendary Kensington lock over here, aka flimsy piece of aluminum holder. And this is pretty much just to tether it down in case you want to have this thing on the show floor, if you want to go to a LAN and someone wants to steal it, which they would, because if you're taking a laptop to a LAN, you're just a dirty casual, don't talk to me. Moving it on to this side, you have two, count it, two headphone jacks right here and here. You have a USB 2 jack for your mouse because if a mouse uses USB 3, that's a pretty big waste. And you have your standard light on disc uh, tray thing that you can remove to put in a caddy and whatnot for an additional hard drive slot. As you can see from the top, it is quite smudged, but I don't know if you can get this, but there is a slight gridded image texture thing on the bottom, but overall it is smooth and glossy. Let's flip the sky over and we'll get to the internals. Here you have some branding stuff, some very nice high quality rubber, very, very grippy. Like you see this kind of high quality stuff on like computer, you don't even see this high quality rubber on like computer cases. This is really good. It probably won't slip inside anyway. Here you have two ports for speakers, one here, one here, one of them is a subwoofer. And you have cooling fit, you have cooling vents. Here you have your standard thingamajig laptop where you just slide two buttons, slide it out. Pretty standard stuff. I'll just pan that across for you. Yeah, you can take from that what you will. Please do not destroy or damage this battery pack as it must be inspected before blah blah blah. In here there is a slot for a SIM card in case you want to enable this thing for 3G and 4G LTE. Pretty much any of those mobile plans that will allow you to use internet on the road and that's pretty cool. One thing about this battery pack is that you will get about three and a half hours of use if you're running if you're running it just with web browsing 
and light browsing stuff like that. A little bit longer if you if you kill the Wi-Fi and you're just doing something. If you're gaming, probably about an hour and a half ish. We'll get I'll get into the specs later. So to open this thing up, not too bad. Just take out these two screws like so. They go here, here. Just slide down, lift up, and here you have it. Very nice wrinkle finish. That doesn't get too dirty. Nice, nice tactile finish. The inside is rather ugly though. Very, 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 very smudgy. But it's the underside, so no one cares. It also has this weird coppery finish that I don't really like, and it keeps getting smudged because I'm smudging it. Blah, blah, blah. Let's throw that one over there. And inside, you will find two DIMM slots supporting up to 16 gigs total, because I don't think that they make greater than 16 gig sticks, but 16 gigs is all you're really going to need. Here's your processor with pull tabs and heatsink. Here's your GPU with pull tabs and heatsink, and here is your fan with fins and whatnot. It is a blower style fan, all that good stuff. I would like to see a little bit more cooling with how thick this laptop is, because I don't know if you could tell, but that is about two finger digits thick across the entire thing, except for this taper right here. And that means that, that is the better half of an, that is the better part of an inch and a half. So this thing's almost pushing two inches thick. Which for how much performance it get for the performance that you're paying for, pretty good actually. I mean it's thinner than Alienware's brick, which is like raw and it's about the same thing as XMGs and whatnot. Standard 6L battery, Intel i7 3610QM at 2 point clocked at 2.3, turbos up to 3.3, and this is the GT650M powered by NVIDIA. Now you might be curious about these tabs, but the thing is these tabs pretty much explain to you how to properly remove this heatsink rather than saying, oh hey, you don't have a warranty anymore if you do if you remove this. Which is actually really cool, because then you can actually upgrade the parts and you're still under warranty, but Sager will not replace the parts that you had in there currently, they'll replace it to its previous spec. So if you want to like chuck in something crazy like a 680M or something in here, um, they might not, they're not going to cover that, but they will replace it with the 650M if the 680M were to fail. So, standard copper pipes, I mean, they've gotten a little bit grimy. I, I would have much rather liked to see shiny, pretty ones, but we can't have it all. Here is your E, here is your mobile PCI Express slot for your Wi-Fi card. This thing supports BGN, all that standard stuff. Subwoofer, speaker. The subwoofer is powered by THX theaters, theater audio, watch my jigger, and it drives a pretty powerful bass punch, but since the speaker is really dinky, it doesn't really provide that great of an audio experience. I mean, odds are I'm going to have headphones in anyway, so, uh, so this audio doesn't really matter. But my gripe is, since these two are bottom facing, if you have it on a table that isn't made out of wood, or if you don't have this thing like resting on a bed or something that's uh, relatively absorbent, kind of material for sound, it'll bounce back and you'll have this really weird reverb sound and it's kind of like echoey and very distant and that really kills some of like the finer points of playing music and whatnot. This thing comes standard with 8 gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM and it is cast latency 11 and that's your fan. And here is the reason why this laptop is so thick. At least I hope so. This is a secondary hard drive bay. Here's your primary one, and here's some nice rubber grommets. Here's some nice rubber stoppers and everything for this one. So you can just like pull this one out, it's fine. This thing comes stock with a Seagate crappy thing. I'm holding upside down, aren't I? This uh, comes standard with a Seagate uh, 750 gigabyte with 5400 RPM, nothing too shabby, but it, I would like to see a 7200 in future revisions. 
because currently, even in the future revision of this, at the time of this, it's still coming with a standard drive. And I would like to see either like momentous, a, a momentous coming there, or at least a 7200 drive. I mean, come on, it's like six, bu it's like six bucks more, and there's no upgrade option unless you want to chuck in an SSD. So you can plug it in here. You can put an SSD in here, which I actually might do because that that would make it boot super fast, and I like fast. So yeah, you can have mass storage here. You can remove this. So just unscrew one screw, pull this thing out, get it by a third-party caddy, and then put a hard drive in there. Plug this in. You'll have three hard drive slots. You can have one be an SSD, two RAID zeroed like that, or you could have if you want to be really ballin', two RAID zeroed SSDs and one mass storage. So you're reading at like 400 meg. You're reading at like super fast. So yeah, I would do that, but I have not the money. So I'm just gonna put this in. It just kind of slides in like that. Make sure you push down the stoppers so it'll go in all the way and this thing won't move around at all. It has a nice plastic cover for easy removal and whatnot. And that's pretty much it. Oh, the LAN on here, the Gigabit Ethernet LAN is powered by Killer. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So you'll have a lot of network management materials. Let's just slide this back on. I'll unscrew. I'll rescrew it in later. Don't worry. So let's open this guy up. As you can see, glossy top to match its glossy bottom. As you can see, it's quite glossy with black on. Full-size Chicle keyboard. Nice, uh, nice tactile feedback. Not too crazy loud unless you're spamming on it like I am. Function, all these keys. Arrow keys, which I really like. Some, some of them give you really dinky arrow keys, and I don't really like that because arrow keys are a pretty integral part of doing stuff. Full number pad, which I personally find to be a luxury, but a very, very nice one to have. Fingerprint reader, nice touchpad, pretty responsive. Not the greatest one I've ever used, and it could I could personally think it to be a little bit bigger. Here's your microphone and dedicated right and left click buttons, which I like a lot more than the kind of you know in, invisible ones where you just kind of have to like slide down and kind of like mash down the find the mash down point of the corner. So this thing powers HDMI, Nvidia Optimus, and a 650. M one gigabyte flavor has houses an i7 indicator LEDs up here and buttons up here so this one's turn Wi-Fi on and off manually mute on and off manually and take a picture with that snazzy webcam supports 720p I think it's your standard 1.3 uh, webcam not too great not terrible though and here is a button that will manually switch between Optimus and not Optimus, depending on if you don't feel like configuring, letting either the computer decide when to use it or if you want to just power it on and off at a whim, which is a really nice feature that I actually really like. A thing you should know about this screen is that it is a TN panel, which means that its viewing angles and color reproduction aren't the best, but the color reproduction is pretty good and the viewing angles are better than most TN laptop panels I've seen. But on the kick but the kicker is this is a full size 1080p screen, runs full 1920 resolution, and I love me some pixel density. The screen's not too smudgy. It's pretty easy to clean too. Powering it on. As you can see, all these things lit up. Here is battery life is a draining. Here is hard drive activity. Wi-Fi connectivity, oh, whoops, um, and the overclock mode, which will promptly turn off because I do not like it because it kills battery and I like my battery life. As you can see, it is very reflective with a back with a black glass with a black background, but once you get some color in there, it'll wash that out pretty well. And it's glossy here. Not too bad. I really would. I really wish they would have put speakers along this top side or here instead of on the bottom. But I can see why because there's not much room to work with battery being here and all. And this entire panel is a very very nice brushed plastic aluminum brushed plastic. 
So it feels, it looks just like brushed aluminum, but it's not as expensive and it doesn't stain as easily, which I really like. As you can see, the reflection kind of got washed out by this bright blue background and it's really nice. I mean, I'll tilt it to see, uh, as you can see, like, if you can see the color wash. It's not too terrible, but it's also not the best. See, like, uh, that's a pretty fair viewing angle, actually. I mean, getting past the reflection, that's a pretty good viewing angle. So, I will quickly log in so you can see what it would look like with a more dramatic color scale. go and that's what it looks like with a rainbow in the background as you can see the reflection is washed out even more and it's actually pretty accurate to the my current like desktop lap screen monitor which I actually have color which I actually have color um, like optimized or configured yeah configured so I mean it's not too bad, it doesn't get terribly dirty. I would say carry a microfiber cloth inside of your bag with you just in case you want to do some touch-up work. I mean, it boots up relatively fast, it boots up in just under a minute, and then signing in takes a little bit longer depending on how much stuff you want to boot up, but right now it is done. Overclock mode is off, and not too much hard hard drive activity. The coolest thing is, is about this hard drive LED is that it is white, instead of green and whatnot, because I am a classic, it, it should have either been in white or red. Personal preference. One gigabyte, so you can't power, you know, a crazy amount of stuff. You can't power like a 3K or a 4K display, but you can power, and you probably can't power multiple displays at the same time, that's why they only offer three. But you can probably power an exter like an external one, so long as it's not the resolution is not crazy huge, and you'll be fine. Um, currently, I am very very happy with this, barring a few gripes, mainly the glossy nature of it and how thick it is, because it's like two di finger digits thick. Um, there, yeah. So it's like that amount. That's pretty thick. Um, this thing doesn't actually receive that much love on the internet, and I think that it deserves more recognition than it gets because it is a very, very good laptop with a very solid spec that is under the price point of Alienware, and it runs the same OEM as Alienware, too. It's just that an M15 is like... Fifteen hundred dollars or some, is something ridiculous like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. Whereas this is ex pretty much exactly the same, barring like the top and probably a, cool, a cooling solution is a little bit different. But it is other than that completely the same, and you can get this for about five hundred dollars less if you want this thing fully pimped out than a fully pimped out Alienware, and I think that's really really snazzy. Um. Oh yeah, the fan noise, if you're wondering, is if you press FN and 1, you can turn, you can enable the fan noise full, full bore, and it's pretty loud. It moves a lot of air though. It's not terrible, I haven't gotten it to ramp up max load like this during gaming, and only I've only gotten it to ramp up like that during, like, benchmarking, for a synthetic benchmark, so like Prime 95 and those things. Um, thermal wise, it idles a little bit hot. I think that's mainly due to the its default um, fan configuration, which is it'll pretty much just it's it doesn't run at all when it doesn't think it needs to, and then it'll just kick in at like sixty seventy percent, and it'll cool it down right away. Then it'll the fan will turn off again. What I did is I reconfigured it in the BIOS so that way it scales. I think you can do it with things like. Uh, Afterburn. I think you could configure a fan profile with like things like Afterburner, Asus FanTech. Those controllers, Speedfan will probably allow you to, but Speedfan 
isn't very use isn't very noob friendly and there aren't pretty colors so I would stay away from that one unless you actually know what you're doing but yeah so I set it up so that way it scales so it it, it idles so this thing runs at around 10 20 percent when it's idling and then it'll just scale up a lot with how hot this thing gets but on the default fan profile this thing idles at around 50 to 60 and it'll get progressively hotter then it'll cool itself down really fast and then it'll be fine but with mine it'll just stick around the mid 40 it'll stick around the mid 40 area it's not i don't think you can hear right now so i think it's really good well that's my review for this particular laptop uh, Thank you for watching, and I hope I've influenced you to possibly buy this. Thanks. Bye.